Now that we've learned and understand the mixer brush, now it is time for us to make use of the mixer brush. But before we make use of the mixer brush, let's just really understand how the mixer brush works. In the previous lesson, we just understand the mixer brush and the settings of the mixer brush. But now we are going to understand how the mixer brush works and how we can make use of the mixer brush to smoothen the face of this our image to give us a nice look. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in closely to this image. Then I'm going to grab the mixer brush. Like I said before, you click and hold down the left click on your mouse to open up the brush menu and select the mixer brush. Okay, I showed you my settings was 20, 20, 10, and 20. Well, these settings is when I am painting, so that when I'm mixing or blending those colors, I make use of these settings, but when you are working on a skin, when you're trying to smooth out the skin with the mixer brush, you don't want to go too high with most of your settings, but partially it's just the wet settings. But I'm going to show you that. So for this, I'm going to set the wet to one, and this, I'm going to set the load to 75, Gonna set that to 75 and the mix I'm gonna set that to 90 and the flow I'm gonna set that to 15. Alright, so when I smoothen the face with the mixer brush, this is the setting that I make use of. But first, before we quickly go and smooth the face, let's quickly create a new layer, a new document and really see what the mixer brush do before we quickly or before we start with mixing the face or trying to smooth the face with the mixer brush. So I'm just going to create a document with any size and this is it. Let this just take some time and open up. So I'm going to grab a shape, just any shape with any color. So I'm going to set this to red and click OK. And I'm gonna just draw this just like that. And I'm gonna create another one. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change the color to something like blue. And this is okay. Click OK. And create the shape. And now I'll grab, I'll grab my move to. Well, we still have that as red. That's not a problem. So click on this little icon close to the thumbnail and set the color to anything you want it to be. Okay, so this is it. I'm gonna put these two ellipses close to each other. So I'm gonna right click on this one, I'm gonna hit on rasterize, and click on this one and hit on rasterize. Now, grab the mixer brush. When you grab the mixer brush, you can increase the size of the brush with your bracket keys and make sure your caps lock is turned off. So I have not selected the right brush right here so you can take this off and select the default round brush now let's take all this up so that you see what's going on right here so i'm going to take the wetness up to this now with these two layers selected and my sample all layer checked now if i start to work mix or start to work paint over my shapes with the mixer brush and this is a little bit slow and it requires lots and lots of PC powers and so on. Now you can see that the mixer brush is mixing these two colors together, creating a smooth transition between these two colors. Well, I'm not gonna go far on that, but you get the idea. So the mixer brush is used for what? Mixing colors, creating a smooth transition between those two colors. Now in terms of our image, right? I showed you my setting, so I'm gonna take this down to one which is what i have there so now open up your frequency separation group which you created now it is time to what smoothing the transition or also smoothing the face like you can see the what the highlights and the shadows are not really having a good transition you can see the beginning of the highlights and see the beginning of the shadows so we need to smooth that with the mixer brush but before we start smoothing you need to understand something with the low frequency layer selected, which is exactly where you are going to work on, with the low frequency layer selected, whatever you do right now, whatever way you mix or anyhow you mix right now on 
your image it's going to affect the low frequency now if you have any issues or you make a mistake along the way or while going you go back and delete this layer now you don't want that right because you spend so much time working on everything before you start seeing error on different places now you have to delete this layer and start all over with your frequency separation that is if you don't have a frequency separation action that you created which we are going to take later in this class so in order to save yourself that stress you need to make a copy of your low frequency layer by clicking and dragging it down to the new icon to create a new a copy of your low frequency now you can do that by selecting the low frequency layer and hitting ctrl j on your keyboard now you can right click and set that to clipping mask right it just stay the same on that layer now that you have all these make sure that the sample all layer is unchecked because you don't want to sample from the high frequency and what so on sample all layer is unchecked and your settings you can play around with your settings not much you have to use mine but you can play around with your settings but this is exactly what i will be using so i'm going to zoom in now you can zoom in or you can zoom out but i'm going to zoom in because i have my navigator right here which i can use to see the full size of the image now zoom in and start with painting all over your image with the mixer brush now something you need to remember don't paint like this because it's going to destroy your image you just want to follow the movement or the flow of your image like if it goes this way you want to go this way if you go this way you want to go this way you don't just want to do something totally that is going to mess your image so i'm going to undo that which i've done right now so i'm going to start from here and start going now make sure as you do this you increase and decrease the size of your brush of the large areas which you want to paint over and the small areas which you want to paint over so i'm going to start and start going now the places where you have the hairs you don't want to smooth those areas because you are going to lose the details of those places okay so let's just go you can see i'm trying to follow the transitions and do what the movement of the skin or how the word the skin are bring, is being created so you want to maintain that follow the, the the movement of the skin or how the word the skin is and apply your word mixer brush on those places so let me turn this off so this is what we have before and this is what we have after just a little that i've done so far and if this is not really happening much or there is nothing happening to you you can increase the wetness of your brush and so on but i'm just going to leave that to this and use this so and as you keep working you always want to see between the before and the after to see the progress or to see what you've exactly done so i'm going to turn this off as the before and this is the after you can just see the clear difference of what it's going on on our image so i'm just going to do this you don't want to watch me go through one of all these stuff and so When painting on a folded area like all these places on the side of the nose and this part of the mouth, mostly you don't really want to mix all this part or paint over this part in order for you not to lose the details. But when painting on places like this, you want to go gently and follow the shape so that you don't lose the shape you have right there.
so now you can see what we have between the before and the after this might not really look nice to you but it depends on how you want it mine i like keeping my own smelling of the face so simple so that i can get lots of details and if i want to do anything later on i can do that well you got the idea so you know you can increase your mixer brush settings or you can go below even mine but it really depends on how you want it to be you know every photographers with their own method of working on their own photos and what so on i like mine to be this way so i just keep it that way so you can go higher i'll teach you how to do this doesn't really mean i'm telling you this is what you are going to use learn from me experiment yours bring out your own idea teach people get to know how to do things on your own this is just a guideline for you but not a rules for you to follow so don't look at my own and say this is not really exactly what you are looking for it's not really going to be exactly what you are looking for because i'm not giving you exactly what you are looking for i'm doing this to my own taste and this is exactly what i'm looking for so take my own settings turn them into yours and get something nice out of your own image but without that let me just quickly go through the neck and you know mix the part of the neck then we move over to the next tutorial and let's see what's going to happen. So for the first step, I've done just doing some kind of a little bit of smoothness on this. I'm going to take my wet up to about 3% of 2%. And I'm just going to go around for the final step. And when I'm done, you're going to see the end of everything that I've done so far. <laughs> 